In the late 1950s, white men were aroused by a mere instinct of self-preservation, a situation that manifested itself in the white power movement, which arose in reaction to the black rights and freedom of the 1960s and 1970s, until at last there sprung into existence a great group called the Ku Klux Klan, KKK. The KKK is a domestic terrorist organization founded shortly after the United States Civil War ended. Despite the KKK's idea that white people were superior to black people, Daryl Davis still attended many of the KKK's rallies. Isn't this incredible? Join us as we unveil why this black man attended KKK rallies. The 19th century Klan was organized initially as a social club by Confederate veterans in Pulaski, Tennessee in 1866. They derived the name from the Greek word kyklos, from which comes the English circle. Klan was added for alliteration, and the Ku Klux Klan emerged. The organization quickly became a vehicle for Southern white underground resistance to radical reconstruction. Klan members sought the restoration of white supremacy through intimidation and violence aimed at the newly enfranchised black freedmen. People who joined the Klan were unhappy about the changes that came as part of the reconstruction. The reconstruction was after the Civil War, from 1865 to 1877. During that time, Many attempts were made to help the formerly enslaved people become a part of society. First, the Constitution of the United States was changed. Changes to the United States Constitution are called amendments. The 14th and 15th Amendments were added to the Constitution. The two new amendments were intended to protect the civil rights of freed people. In addition, federal laws that saved formerly enslaved people were also written. Federal laws apply to all of the U.S. Still, Many freed people could not enjoy their new rights. Some white people frightened, hurt, and even killed them. Many of these activities were organized by the KKK. The KKK used various ways to frighten and hurt newly freed African Americans. They acted secretly at nighttime and wore costumes to carry out their atrocities. Yet Davis did not condemn them but believed they lacked love, and according to him, he didn't have to set out to convert these people, but instead, befriend them. Then. The love shown to them would convert them. However, Daryl Davis is best known for his talent as a musician. He is an international recording artist recognized for being one of the greatest blues, boogie woogie and rock and roll pianists of all time. Daryl has used his appreciation for the arts to help start fair in the arts. In addition to his career, he was the only black man that ever attended a KKK rally. Daryl Davis first befriended a member of the Ku Klux Klan in 1983 at the Silver Dollar Lounge in Frederick, Maryland, where he was performing. He says they bonded over liking the same type of music. On the first time, he befriended a member of the Ku Klux Klan. He was playing music, his inaugural performance at the Silver Dollar Lounge. A white gentleman approached him as he played, expressing his admiration for the music. He thanked him, shook his hand, and the man remarked, this is the first time I ever heard a black man play the piano like Jerry Lee Lewis. This statement caught him off guard. He was surprised that the man didn't recognize the origins of that style of music. He responded, Well, where do you think Jerry Lee Lewis learned how to play that style? The man admitted he didn't know. Then Davis explained that Lewis learned it from the same place he did. He explained further that black, blues, and boogie-woogie piano players are where rockabilly and rock and roll style came from. However, the man insisted that Jerry Lee invented that. I haven't ever heard no black man except for you playing like that, the man said. This made Davies realize the man had likely never heard of Fats Domino or Little Richard. Then, the conversation took an unexpected turn when the man confessed. This is the first time I ever sat down and drank with a black man. Intrigued, Davis began to inquire further. He pondered how, in his 25 years on this earth, he had interacted with thousands of white individuals, sharing drinks, meals, and conversations. Yet, this man, who was 15 to 20 years older than him, had never experienced such an interaction with a black person. Curiosity was piqued as he questioned the possibility of that. The white man was initially silent. His friend urged him to disclose the truth. Finally, he admitted, I'm a member of the Ku Klux Klan, he burst out laughing because he genuinely didn't believe him. He thought the man was joking. But as he chuckled, the man reached into his wallet, sifting through credit cards and photos until he produced his clan card, handing it over. Suddenly, 
His laughter ceased. Recognizing the clan symbol, he realized this encounter was no joke. Now, he pondered why he was seated beside a clansman. Despite the initial shock, the clansmen remained amicable. Their shared appreciation for music had brought them together. The clansmen even urged him to contact him whenever he returned to the bar with his band. The mere fact that a clansman and a black person could sit together and enjoy the same music planted a seed of possibility in his mind, leading to why this black man attended many KKK rallies. Thus, he decided to nourish that seed by writing a book. His mission? To travel across the country, sitting down with clan leaders and members to uncover a fundamental question. How could they harbor hate towards him without even knowing him? On his approach to engaging with clansmen, he believed in arming himself not with weapons but with knowledge. He extensively researched the clan and its beliefs, often surpassing the understanding of those he interviewed. This preparation earned him their respect. He understood that in dialogue, enemies find common ground. They discovered shared interests and built relationships by spending time together, even with adversaries. Through these connections, friendships blossomed. He didn't aim to convert anyone but allowed them to see the truth themselves. They witnessed the light and made a choice to change on their own accord, there be allowing this black man to attend KKK rallies. When he asked the Klansmen why they hated him, their initial response reflected deeply ingrained beliefs of racial superiority. They viewed non-whites as inferior, subscribing to notions of inherent racial traits. For instance, one Klansman, an exalted Cyclops, shared the widely held belief that black individuals possess a genetic predisposition towards violence. During a car ride, this Klansman confidently asserted, well, we all know that all black people have within them a gene that makes them violent. In disbelief, he challenged this assertion, pointing out his own lack of violent behavior despite being black. However, the Klansman dismissed this, claiming that his violent gene was simply dormant. Faced with such absurd reasoning, he struggled to engage in meaningful discourse. Yet, he found a way to challenge the Klansman's beliefs by turning the argument back on itself. Using the same flawed logic, he posited that all white people possess a gene for serial killing. When the Klansman failed to name black serial killers, but could easily list white ones, he confronted him with the absurdity of his argument. Confronted with his own logic, the Klansman fell silent and eventually changed the subject. Five months later, based on the impact of that conversation, the Klansman renounced his membership in the Klan. This pivotal moment marked the beginning of his journey of enlightenment, and the Klansman's departure signaled the first step towards his own transformation. Born on March 26, 1958, in Chicago, Illinois, Daryl Davis grew up amidst the complexities of racial tensions that plagued American society. From a young age, he became acutely aware of the harsh realities of racism that permeated his environment. In 1968, at the tender age of 10, Davis experienced a traumatic incident that would shape his perspective on race for years to come. Through 30 years, Davis managed to talk 200 people into leaving the KKK, as they would listen to his performances and speak with him often. One of them was Roger Kelly, who was the Grand Dragon of the KKK in Maryland. Kelly became close friends with Davis, inviting him to become his daughter's godfather. Upon leaving the clan, Roger Kelly handed his robe to Davis. He keeps the robes as trophies and proof that racial discrimination can be beaten. With over three decades of experience, Davis has written a book, Clandestine Relationships, and was the focus of the accidental courtesy documentary. Daryl Davis is a hero who managed to strip people of ignorance and ill intent with compassion and understanding, despite facing prejudice and hate just because of his skin color. Davis has a strange passion, trying to understand the reasoning behind racism and end it not by opposing, but by communicating. And for over three decades, this black man attended the KKK rallies and talked to the members. Since his journey began, Davis has joined an all-white country band, attended KKK rallies, and accepted a certificate of friendship from the traditionalist American Knights of the KKK. In Washington, D.C., Daryl Davis's residence is unique for a black man. Adorning a wood-paneled wall adjacent to his electric keyboard, where he hones his skills as a professional musician, are numerous framed photographs depicting him alongside former white supremacists. Stored in a back closet, 
Davis keeps a collection of over 50 Ku Klux Klan robes, crafted from silk or cotton, showcasing an array of colors such as purple, green, or white, each accompanied by a matching pointed hood. These robes symbolize individuals who have renounced hate, their transformation facilitated by Davis's unwavering friendship. Amidst a world riddled with divisions between Republicans and Democrats, older and younger generations, law enforcement and civilians, or various racial groups, Davis, at 62 years old, champions the potency of human connection in transcending perceived barriers. His impact extends to more than 200 individuals who have severed ties with the KKK or other white supremacist organizations, a testament to the transformative power of genuine relationships fostered by Davis. However, this black man not only attended KKK rallies but has proven that we all can listen, engage, and learn from one another. We all have the power to change the world around us for the better, even if that world is just our household, workplace, or classroom. Would you take up the challenge today? Listen and engage before you judge. As always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and share to inform more people about the reality of black people. Thanks for watching.